Hello and welcome to Distributed Systems and Blockchain in the News. My name is Thomas Bocek and this week in the news we have again Ukraine. There um, I was a bit worried um, about a possible BGP hijack. So there was this announcement that um, there is a potential um, rerouting of uh, internet traffic um, through autonomous systems that should not be routing this traffic or uh, supposed not to route this traffic uh, involve parties or um, uh, autonomous system from Russia and from Ukraine. So I thought uh, that there is something fishy going on. Um, however, it turned out that the US company Cogent um, which does peering and um, connects these uh, autonomous systems. They um, ceased to operate in Russia, so that could be um, this this rewriting or this BGP hijack. Uh, it's it's most likely that it's due to uh, this this U.S. company that's uh, not doing peering anymore in um, Russia or um, in in the Ukraine. Um, so yeah, that's um, the announcement that the company Cogent is cutting internet services. Uh, however, uh, there are still internet services. Uh, so this, uh, it seems that this is the only company doing that. Um, Russia seems to be still well connected. Then um, I also read um, about that uh, Russia wants to um, isolate itself from the internet. However, this was a bit a misleading title. So I put here uh, that it's only for governmental agencies. So um, now the, all the agencies in the government uh, services uh, that these governments offer, they need to run um, on Russian server in Russia. Um, so that was an announcement. First I thought, okay, now they're starting to isolate, but uh, this is not the case. However, many services are unavailable in Russia. For example, uh, TikTok limits its services. Um, TikTok is a social network uh, used to upload videos. It's uh, quite heavily used these days um, to report about the war. And um, so this is now limited. Um, you cannot upload any videos from if you're within Russia anymore. And also other companies, they stop their services or about to stop their services. Visa or MasterCard, for example, PricewaterhouseCoopers, they uh, stop to operate in Russia. Also many media outlets, they are also leaving Russia because there's a new law. Um, and the law is about fake news. So... Um, if you um, report fake news, you may end up in prison. And since it's not possible uh, to determine what is fake news and what not, or what the government sees as fake news and, and what's not, um, then many media um, news sites and TV stations, uh, they stop operations in Russia and pulled out from Russia. Since many services are not available anymore, um, there are ways on how to make them available again. Um, for example, one could use VPNs um, or for example uh, Tor, the Onion Router. Um, I will talk about Tor in an upcoming lecture. Um, so uh, Twitter recently announced that they are now available over Tor. So this is the Onion address. Um, how this works, I will talk uh, in, in the lecture. And there are also alternatives to Twitter. So if uh, Twitter, if the site is not available, 
there is still a knitter.net for example um, if I want to check the Twitter feed from a BBC then I can access it with uh, this site and uh, probably there are more of those sites uh, where you can access the information uh, which are um, hopefully not censored um, I don't know if they're censored or not um, but um, I'm sure there will be always a way to access relevant information. Last week I also mentioned that uh, Starlink is available in Ukraine um, and um, this week I saw that the signal can be easily jammed or also is being jammed so one of the next tasks um, where Elon Musk and his Starlink are focusing on is uh, to stop or to make signal jamming much more difficult um, as of now this was not a priority but um, in the Ukraine it is since the signal is jammed so uh, they will focus on how the signal is uh, or would be more difficult um, to jam. I came across uh, this beautiful site, latency numbers. Um, I was talking about latencies in the introduction lecture, and uh, this links uh, this link takes you to the following site about latency. Um, here you can uh, play with the slider and show how latency evolved over time. Here we have the latency uh, packet round trip from uh, California to the Netherlands. Um, so this is 150 milliseconds and if you move here the slider you see um, that latencies change. Um, so the L1 cache, L2 cache uh, gets faster, memory gets faster, um, but what always stays is latency and um, this is uh, bound by the speed of light uh, that we see also here in the code. Um, here we see how those numbers are calculated and if we go to the um, latency the network latency here we see um, that speed of light is um, cannot be changed and this is always 150 uh, milliseconds but um, you see that um, things get faster um, so disk access gets faster uh, data center data center stays all the uh, also the same um, but um, things improve network state. So this is uh, also a reason why we want to have distributed systems to move the service closer to the user. Another interesting aspect is I also showed um, or mentioned that you actually if you scale you don't need necessarily to scale horizontal. Um, vertical is fine if you're small and the machine gets faster and faster. I showed uh, Moore's law, how this evolves, uh, Nielsen's law about the bandwidth and uh, we can quickly check uh, the lecture slides. Um, this need to be updated in that case. Um, so here is the lecture slide. And this is about the vertical and horizontal scaling and here I have um, the um, law of um, more uh, uh, Moore's law and on top uh, we have here the transistor count 50 billion transistors I mentioned here um, Threadripper has uh, with 64 cores around 40 billion transistors and Apple topped everything with the M1 Max uh, with uh, 57 billion transistors and just a couple of days ago Apple announced their new machines, the M1 Ultra, which is basically two M1 Max, uh, so they have 114 
billion transistors on this chip and this chip is super fast um, so we see the trend is continuing everything gets faster speed gets faster and if you decide um, for a distributed system because of scalability since you expect a lot of traffic um, these machines small machines uh, can handle lots of traffic and they get faster and faster and faster so um, if you have a service um, first um, or if you start a service uh, you don't know how many users you will have first start vertical scaling and up to a certain point when you have millions of users um, then you may think about horizontal scale but first scale vertically if uh, you max out your hard hardware then um, consider horizontal scale And this was uh, two days ago. Um, it's a um, uh, security uh, incident in uh, protocol. Um, I also mention or I explain how such a reflection or amplification attack works um, when we talk about uh, protocols. And I also show um, examples of, of such amplification attacks where I see a multiplicator of 100. Um, I think the highest multiplicator I saw is, was 500. And uh, here um, the amplification ratio is huge. So um, it's 4 billion to 1. Uh, it's, it's a full 32-bit uh, number. So that means um, if you as an attacker send one byte the victim uh, gets four gigabyte so with one byte you send here the uh, victim gets four gigabyte and this is huge so um, of course this needs to be changed and uh, hopefully it will be uh, changed um, quite quickly then the last article it's also about um, how hardware can fail or how reliable there are there is um, this company uh, called uh, Backblaze they have lots of storage space and they do surveys or they analyze their data they did um, mostly in the recent years mostly with um, hard drives or with spinning disks and recently they are also using um, SSDs, so they are now publishing these statistics about SSDs, um, how endurable they are uh, when they fail. They analyzed over 2200 SSD devices, they also show the reports here. Um, it heavily depends depends on what model um, currently they used so we see a failure rate of 40 percent and then we see a failure rate of zero percent so the numbers are not that conclusive um, and uh, also they mentioned they also have an article about um, the comparison of ssds versus um, 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 spinning disks versus uh, uh, hdds and um, here still this article here um, still um, it's not fair what they are trying to um, compare so they in this article they mentioned how you can compare what's fair and what's not fair um, for the spinning disks they have lots of data for the SSDs they have not that much data but it indicates that the SSDs are a bit more robust so here the latest number um, where they consider it a fair comparison, the failure rate of SSDs uh, 1%, the failure rate of the spinning disks 1.4%. So uh, it's not that much, uh, but still um, th there's a gap and uh, more data will show uh, if the gap um, will persist or if it gets smaller or if it gets larger. So next year we probably see uh, better data, more uh, conclusive data. Um, what also they did not consider uh, is uh, the workloads um, in contrast to uh, spinning disks the uh, solid state disks they were out so uh, if you write data to the SSDs uh, eventually uh, these um, uh, cells will, will break and um, how they break or why they break is 
written in this article who explains the um, what cells there are in in uh, if you use SSD so there's single level cell multi level cell triple level cell and quad level cells and the most expensive SSDs they have uh, SLC single level cell it has one bit per cell uh, the QLC has four bit per cells um, and the SLC you have um, quite a huge lifetime so uh, TW, TBW is total bytes written means uh, you can overwrite uh, a cell a hundred thousand times um, on, uh, until this uh, cell uh, breaks or is, 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 uh, stops to work and if you go to multi-level cell or, or triple level cell uh, this um, decreases significantly so um, here with uh, triple level cell you have roughly uh, 3000 to 5000 writes um, that you can do uh, on a cell um, uh, on, on, before it breaks and um, so these SLC they are much more reliable they are also quite fast uh, much much faster um, but also more expensive so there's also the trade-off um, which SSD you use for what workload to use if you do mostly read operations then you don't worry about uh, wearing out if you do heavy read operations uh, then the uh, SSD might break soon and you can uh, check uh, also out on your machine how your SSD is doing um, I can check this out with the tool uh, smart control um, I tried with um, my two disks. I have SDA and SDB. Let's see SDB, um, how my disk is doing. So this analyzes um, what's, uh, what the status of my disk is. And um, here we see were leveling count, um, which here is the uh, percentage of spare cells I have. So once this is reached to zero then my hard drive will degrade um, and I will lose capacity because more and more cells break so uh, an SSD or fresh SSDs always have spare cells if uh, a cell break then the spare is used uh, so that you still have the capacity and once this is reached uh, then your capacity decreases until the hard drives uh, stop to, to work completely so I still have 92% uh, uh, which is nice, um, so still um, plenty of uh, spare cells uh, which I can use. On my laptop it doesn't look that good, so there I think I'm at 60% or so, um, but this, this laptop is also old. But this is one of the factors why SSDs may break and why the workload is important um, for failure rates of SSDs.